Table and band saws have a lot in common. Both have miter gauge slots, both have fences, both cut things, both have sleds. With all the similarities, band saws are often overlooked when it comes to sleds. The table saw has one, band saws generally don't. Today give me a chance to show you a sled made just for the band saw that will open up all sorts of possibilities. Before I show you how I made the base and the jigs that attach to it, let me show you what it can do. The base alone is just a base, but it's what we add to it that makes it interesting. I made both a vertical and horizontal miter arm. The vertical miter arm has bearings on both the front and the backside that keeps it perpendicular to the front, giving us a perfect 90 degree angle. It simply follows the front and back side of the base. The horizontal miter arm acts just like a miter gauge, but gets me right next to the blade. This makes miter cuts easy, and unlike the table saw, doesn't give me kickback. With my vertical arm locked at a given measurement, I can use the horizontal arm to get repeatable cuts. To prevent cutting into the arm, I added a sacrificial strip of wood attached with carpet tape. A jig I've made before is a circle cutting jig, but it was flawed as I had to use a thin blade and I was forced to add a hole to the center of any circle I cut. The circle cutting jig I made locks over the base and the sliding miter arm works off the ruler. With a view window, I can lock it to the radius size I'm looking for. Because I don't have to lock this jig into the miter slot like the last one, it doesn't matter what blade I use as I make multiple cuts and finish off with a spin at the end. Now, I know what you're thinking, and yes, this has a hole in the center. But to create a circle without a center hole, I created this turntable. The turntable fits on the bolt, and I add carpet tape to the top of it. And now I just attach a square and cut. Of course, because bandsaw is pulled downward, it's important to have a safety bar next to the blade. The third jig I'm going to show you is a protractor arm, something I've wanted for a very long time. With this jig, I can create angles for any kind of segment that I'm looking for. It works by lining a protractor to the ruler lines that are perpendicular to the front of my sled. This gives me a wide range on the top, is I can set it to any line and use either the front side of my protractor arm or the back. Like the circle cutting jig with the turntable, it has a safety bar. Now that I've shown you what this does, let me give you a quick rundown on how to make each part. Keep in mind that I have three videos that go into much more depth that you can access on my website for free along with step-by-step -step instructions. There are PDF files you can download and I have material and tool lists so you know what you're getting yourself into. We'll start off with the base. The width is the edge past the blade or 10 inches and the height is six inches. Just like my table saw sled, I'm going to need a miter bar for the miter slot. I have some future jigs that will depend on the sled being locked in the miter slot with the ability to expand and lock with a machine screw. Before attaching the miter bar, I cut a T-track groove which will allow me to attach jigs to the top. With the notch done, I added the expansion bar into the slot, added glue, then the base. To keep it perfectly square to the bandsaw tabletop, I use plywood around the edge and clamp down. If I check the expansion slot, it's looking good. I cut the sled to size and nibbled a ruler channel in the base. With a hacksaw, I cut both the T-track and the yardstick to size and added epoxy. To keep each parallel to the front of the sled, I use toothpicks and wedge them in the back. It is absolutely crucial to keep things square here as well as flat to the base. Clamps made that happen. With the base done, I moved on to both miter arms. Since I'll be using quarter inch T-bolts, I used a three piece section method that will ensure that the bolts are later dead center. I used quarter inch bolts to get the gap right and clamped everything up. To add bearings to the bottom, I made sure the miter arm was square to the edge by clamping my square and locking the arm in place with a thumb knob. Then I placed both bearings on opposite sides and used a piece of duct tape as a temporary spacer. I used hot glue to keep them next to the edge, used brad point drill bits to mark their location, and drill them out at the drill press. I made some ebony dowels that I epoxied into the bearings and then glued the dowels to the arm. To finish the miter arms, I cut the horizontal arm to size. 
the circle jig attachment is the same size as the base. I cut two strips of half inch plywood from the scraps. These will act as spacers and runners that will allow the vertical miter arm to slide below it. They're six inches in length and glue parallel from each other on the edge. The base and the jig will both use rare earth magnets. I'm drilling a point of reference here that I transferred onto the base. Then I drilled eight holes that will fit eight magnets. I first attached each set together, added epoxy, and then the jig. Once one side was epoxied, I pulled the back off and added epoxy again and clamped them together. The jig will have three different pockets on the top that will allow me to see the measuring position, attach the pin, and lock the jig down to the T-track. To cut each of the pockets out, I use the table saw. This is a great way to make sure that all my cuts are parallel. I attached it to see if everything was lined up. Perfect. Next, I glued a couple thin strips to one of the inside tracks. This will be important as it will allow me to lock the jig to the T-track with a thumb knob. While that dried, I went back to the sliding miter arm and drilled out a one inch hole and then a three quarter inch through hole. This will be my view window. With my table saw, I cut a one inch square piece of acrylic, added a center line by connecting one diagonal side and then sanded it to be a circle shape with my strip sander. I added epoxy to a nut that will hold my center pin and some epoxy to the view window. To install it, we'll add the T-Track bolt first, the arm, the circle jig, and then a knob to the top. All that's left is to cut a bolt to use as a pin. If you don't mind having a hole in your circle, then you're done. To make a circle without a hole, we'll create a turntable by rounding a piece of plywood to three inches. The safety bar uses two pieces that fit in the left and right channels and a piece of plywood that's the same thickness as the turntable. You don't need to have a circle cutting jig to make this protractor arm. I have a printout that you can attach to a piece of plywood and cut. With my circle cut, I added epoxy to a protractor and let it cure before adding screws. I drilled the center plastic piece of the protractor arm with a quarter inch twist bit. My arm that my wood will rest against is getting a T-track. This will allow me to add different stops to it in the future. As you can see, I use my table saw to cut out a channel and a piece of stock. I cut it to size, as well as a piece of T-Track, which I epoxied in. After finding the center of the arm by connecting my diagonals, I drilled it out with a quarter inch hole. Two holes on either side will help me calibrate the arm. To position the arm, I set it as close to the center of the protractor that I could. I drew a line on a piece of scrap pine and cut next to the line. When I got it to what I thought was as close to parallel, I tightened the first screw. There's still a little more calibrating left to be done, but first I created another safety arm that's the thickness of the protractor and the plywood circle. I added a screw to it and used a thin nut in the track to hold it in place. With that secure, I cut a pentagon and put it together. I found that my angles were just slightly off. I have another printout that shows me which way I need to turn the arms to fine tune it. Then I cut another pentagon and it was perfect. I'd like you to look at these names now. These are the people that motivate me to keep pushing forward. I want to publicly thank each of you and welcome Ridge Lightfoot. Because I don't charge for my plans, these are the guys that help me keep the lights on. Thank you, Michelle B., Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Tommy QR, Zach Finch, and again, Rich Lightfoot. Give these guys a thank you. If you'd like to join the team, look for the Patreon link in the description. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at MakeThingsWithRob. And remember to keep making things.